uh, with a group of students and uh, other are working with uh, American GIs that come to Amsterdam to pass their uh, weekend there and spend dollars. And uh, at, at this moment, up till now, we only uh, worked with uh, American deserters, GI deserters. But uh, since a short time, we uh, found out, and we also stimulated that, that there are uh, American GIs that uh, do not want to desert, but stay in the army and uh, bring their point of view about the war in Vietnam inside the army itself. And uh, although this movement is not very strong at this moment, it's only in the beginning, uh, there is the start of this movement, and uh, in my opinion, as the war in Vietnam is going on, this will, this will, uh, this will grow. This will, uh, this will uh, be bigger and bigger. Could you give us a number? A number of what? Of GIs that you think are in this movement. As far as I know from Holland, at least 10. Is it how many? 10. Do you have any idea how many deserters there are from the American army in Europe? Ask the, ask the headquarters in Heidelberg that question. We don't know. Headquarters in Heidelberg? Yes. Or Bonn? The last figure that they gave was 374. 374, according to the headquarters of Heidelberg, according the to last the figure that we were able to obtain from them. It may not be the one they'll give you, but we got it to our panel. How many countries are involved, if you don't have to name them, in, well, this, in this effort, in this help the deserter effort? Well, nearly all uh, Western European countries. All Western Europe. Nearly all. Nearly all. That would be Western Germany, France, Holland, Belgium. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. 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 Including the Scandinavian countries. Including Switzerland. Including Switzerland. Including Austria. Including Austria. Including Italy. Including Italy. Including, Italy. including, Italy. including as far as we know, Portugal. Yeah. Not Portugal. Not Portugal so far. But we don't know all of this. A lot of things happen that we don't know about, and we find out later. Parallel things. Uh, what does this organization do to help? The well, there's, uh, there's of course material, we uh, spread, uh, spread leaflets in uh, Amsterdam and uh, uh, we give them material we get. Well, uh, do you think that Private Perrin could give me in general what his plans are now that he is in the status which he won't define? No. Wait until you get it on. You can ask me. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. You can ask the question about. Mm -hmm. Private parent, have you communicated with your family since you've left the offices of the United States Army? Um. Um, I didn't say that I have left the auspices of the United States Army, um, but uh, in any case, my uh, my folks don't exactly uh, go along with what I have been doing, and uh, my relations with my family, uh, my mother and my father, have been uh, there's been a wider split as this thing uh, goes along. To the what what do you intend to do now generally speaking oh continue working uh, with other soldiers in the army uh, continue distributing leaflets um, discussing the war with them um, and um, we hope that the uh, movement will grow um, to the point where people will start uh, beginning to uh, take notice of the fact that there are uh, a growing, there is a growing faction within the army opposed to the war. Okay. Okay. I am Babine. Yes, of course. I like you know.
Private Perrin. No, 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 no. no. Private Perrin, what is your unit and where is it stationed? Uh, my unit was the first of the 64th Armor in Kitzigan, Germany. Uh, you say it was? Yes. Uh, tell me, what do you hope to accomplish by being here this evening? Um, hope to relate the, uh, the fact that there are soldiers inside the army, that there is a growing number of soldiers inside the army that are opposed to this war, and that I do know personally of a large number who are opposed to it, but uh, do not want to become public and uh, jeopardize their, their future lives. Um, Tell me, do you intend to return to duty? If, um, not if, not if the present policy uh, of the, the United States is continued in Vietnam. If, uh, if there were a complete and unconditional withdrawal of all troops from Vietnam, then I would go back. Uh, I'd like to hear what you would like to see happen in Vietnam. Peace, uh, what? I would like to see peace in Vietnam. I'd like to see uh, the United States allowing the people of Vietnam to determine for themselves their destiny. Uh, the other night, Mr. Carmichael, who was sitting next to you, said that he didn't want to see peace in Vietnam. He wanted to see the Vietnamese beat the United States of America. Do you share that view? Um, I don't think, at this point, I don't think it would do any harm for uh, someone to uh, set the United States in its place. Um, um, I would, uh, I'd, I'd personally, I'd be satisfied to see peace in Vietnam, but uh, if the Vietnamese were to defeat the United States, then uh, I wouldn't be opposed to that at all either. Uh, by the way, when did you first meet Mr. Conway? Tonight, except for uh, seeing him on television in the States. How soon do you intend to... Do you intend to return to Vermont? Uh, not for a while. <laughs> There's been some talk that, and some articles published that there are soldiers in the European Army who are volunteering for Vietnam. Do you know of any? I don't personally know of any. I've, uh, I've heard that General Polk says there are. I, I've never met one. Are you satisfied with your present status? Yes. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Is it possible for the gentleman who has been speaking from behind that white curtain to identify himself? Who are you asking that question? I'm, I'll, he, he doesn't want to identify himself. He does not? No, because it would incriminate himself and others. And uh, it would be detrimental to the uh, best interests of the uh, anti-war movement. I'll accept that. <coughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Carmichael, what are your thoughts? I'm going back inside the heart of imperialism. <laughs> when is that? Very soon. Very soon. Uh, you don't care to say just when. Should you have came soon? Within a week. Someone raised the question, and I couldn't answer. I don't mean to ask this in any offensive way. Are any charges against you, uh, ending against you in the States? Yes, there are several for mold arrests. There's also a charge pending for violation of a passport regulation. And I understand that there are some senators who are trying to bring a charge of treason, headed by Barry Goldwater. <laughs> So you expect to be arrested when you get home? No, I never expect to be arrested. I expect to live and just live a normal life like any other normal young man. But uh, the 
plans of mice and men do oftentimes go astray. Thank you. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Well, sorry about the hassle in the beginning. I hope we cleared it up. All right. Merci, ça va. You don't have This is row three. It's, it's, it's not a complete organization. It's just, uh, let's say, people against the war. Yeah, they talk about whether there is an organization in Germany. Uh, uh, at will in Germany. It's, uh, 
fact, the same is true also in Britain and, and Belgium. Some of these other countries, although they aren't necessarily. Are there, for instance, uh, assistance organizations in Eastern Belgium? Yeah, yes. Also, you would probably. You know them? Uh, you ever have been there? I haven't been in Ireland. Yeah. Just uh, word word gets around that there are people in in different countries that will help. Try and uh, let these guys know that uh, there are different opinions other than what they're being told, and uh, you find that there are different varieties of. Uh, reasons for deserting. Mine was because I was working against war in the army and I could no longer do it. Um, George is a pacifist. Um, uh, and, you know, just various reasons. So, uh, when you say you were working against war in the army, yes. you've been uh, all the time? Uh, for about, during basic training I didn't. Did, was this uh, some uh, continuation of your before the army? I've been to, um, one anti-war uh, meeting before I went into the army. And uh, when I went into the army, I was aware of the fact that uh, uh, some of the acts of the United States were inhuman, um, such as uh, the uh, lazy dog bombs with the, uh, the you know the, the sliver-like uh, metal that uh, slaughters civilians and soldiers, and uh, the napalm, and um, the fact that the government was in fact lying, that uh, when they said the civilian areas were not being bombed, the civilian areas were being bombed, there was photos to prove it. Did you remember that you heard of the Sandy War meeting? Oh, no, and things that I read in the uh, New York Times and uh, heard on radio and television. Did you, did you belong to some anti war group? I never belonged to any anti war movement, any group or organization. I belonged to an anti war movement prior to uh, entering the Peace Corps and then. <coughs> Are you all, do I understand you're all members now of a new organization? Uh, or is it an actual organization? Are you? No, I, are you, I, don't, I don't think uh, that any of, at least in my case, I do not believe in organization. I think a person should be judged not by what he says or by the organization that he belongs to, but a person should be judged by his actions. Therefore, we. Uh, we don't want any formal organization. We are just, we, we all have different opinions, different ideas, and we are putting out this newspaper now to, uh, to um, let the soldiers know uh, what we think. Well, are, you all, are you all associated with this newspaper? Is that the bond that brings you together? Yes, yes. And uh, we're, we're like uh, friends who are against a certain thing, which is the war in Vietnam. When just acts, the whole world. We're, we're against this, so we're, like, he might think, well, let's do it this way, and somebody else might think, let's do, no, that's not right, let's do it another way. But we sort of compromise. Who's the other thing? Um, <laughs> Philip and I started it, and the rest of them have joined us. Um, well, you might say that we're just an editorial committee. Is there anything you can say about how you finance it? Um, friends, um, well, you know, for instance, the printers, um, they're sympathetic to uh, what we're doing, so they do it for free. Um, people who are sympathetic to uh, what we are doing give us paper, and it's the same as uh, how we exist. People who are sympathetic to us take us into their homes and uh, give us food and a bed. And uh, like uh, we say in the newspaper, uh, there are people, there are many people in the world who are against um, uh, this ridiculous war in Vietnam, and uh, they are willing to help. And all that is necessary is to ask. Are any of you supporting yourselves or willing to support yourselves? I'm working, yes. Other than uh, with a newspaper, I have a job. <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm using my funds primarily to live with a family, but uh, using my funds for extra uh, uh, creative activity and, and I'm studying French. Uh, at the first time, I uh, intend to. Uh, I'm going to work at that job, obviously, and it won't be any problem. How are you distributing? Uh, well, as we, as we said, uh, well, that's pretty general. How are you, how are you distributing your information to the 
servicemen? Um, there are servicemen on leave. First of all, it will be distributed to all the anti-war movements in Europe. And from there, uh, it will be just distributed to soldiers on leave, soldiers on passes in uh, the countries where the United States military exists. And um, it is being mailed to some. Uh, um, Are distributed in Vietnam? Uh, we have addresses in Vietnam, yes. We have a uh, student. Yeah. And it, it, there's no problem with distribution in any case. Um, in some cases, it's hard to get contact with them because there are so many organizations helping them. And uh, the five of us have become uh, good friends, and uh, we are more or less uh, working together. Uh, and we are willing to take on anyone else who wants to join us. Um, is, is your information good enough to be able to say how many young Americans like you there are in each of the major countries of Western Europe where there are such people? I believe in Sweden there are uh, 25 who have registered with the police and uh, I know there are some that have not as yet registered with the police and there are more going on every day. There are more coming, there are more going into Switzerland, there are more going into France, Yugoslavia. But do you have numbers, even round numbers? Um, as I say, there are only, uh, that I only know of 25 who have registered in the police in Sweden, and I know that there are approximately, probably within 10, you know, 100 in, in France. In Germany? Would you mind if I interject something on this? Yes. I may have to make a mistake. We have the figures from the army uh, moving approximately between. However, a great many of these people try and hide in Germany and are caught very rapidly or are put in a situation where they give themselves out. This is the starting thing. Can I ask a question? Ask what happens to them when they are caught? Who are you asking this to? Uh, they generally cook. All right. Uh, up to March 1967, they were usually tried either as AWOL or as deserted. Do you have any information? Uh, okay. Since March 1967, there seems to have been a curious phenomenon that while we know that the desertion rate has been constantly increasing, the number of prosecutions for desertion have steadily dropped. I think they are very leery about prosecuting desertion right now. I have the information that one young man who had been absent for one year, his name is Graham, Gregory Graham, we have helped him from time to time, but he had been a difficult case, uh, who had given himself up after one year, was not charged with desertion. Um, I might ask you know what happened to him? He escaped from Mannheim prison in company with Mr. William Forrester in a rather curious escape which we and found his way back to some of our support organizations, support groups. And we were rather suspicious of the story accompanying his escape. Uh, we interviewed him in front of CBS television. Excuse me? I deny calling myself a deserter uh, because I don't like. Tell us again what you started to say about your definition of yourself as a refugee. I consider myself a refugee uh, from the government of the United States. Uh, in 1956, the Hungarians who came to the United States, <coughs> or to other parts of Europe, uh, when a Russian uh, seeks freedom and reaches the United States, uh, the East Berliners who fled safely to West Berlin, they were not considered deserters. They were refugees. Uh, I feel that anyone is a refugee who 
follows his conscience, does something that he considers to be right, and has reasons to explain why the oppressor is wrong. But how were you being oppressed by the United States? Uh, personally, I was not being oppressed. It's the idea of the war. Uh, being a pacifist, uh, I, I see no reason for uh, any military whatsoever. Of course, it's inconceivable not to have a military. But, but you are not being oppressed, but you are nevertheless a refugee from oppression. You're not a deserter, you say. Are you a deserter? No. Uh, desertion is relative. It's relative to, to who calls you a deserter. The United States, as far as they're concerned, I'm a deserter. <coughs> but let's talk absolutely. I'm not a deserter. I've done what is right. Do you object to being called a deserter? Is that it? I detest the term. I'm a refugee. How about the, uh, the others who are with you? Do you all <coughs> reject the term deserter? Well, for me, it just depends which way you look at it. Uh, from a, America's explanation, uh, American deserter is a guy who's a, a crumb, a bum, you name it. But um, back when we were fighting the British, they didn't, uh, the British, I think the British thought that way too, actually, you know? And we uh, sort of broke off, broke off relations and started fighting a war for our freedom because we didn't want the mother country to be fighting against us. I'm, I'm just Really so, so actually, we, we, we here are fighting for our freedom, too. Because you realize, if we let America or another country get away with the, a war in Vietnam, uh, the CIA in Bolivia, uh, back and back a little while ago with Cuba, we let a government get away with these things, what's going to happen next? My, my question is simply the term deserter. Some People who are deserters want to be called deserters. I'm asking whether I'm you wanted or